I decided to finish um, It's Not Summer Without You, which was a terrible decision, really, because it didn't make me feel any better. Okay. The <laughs> Are you crying? Hi, guys. It's Julie with an eye here. I figured I'd start with a banger, and that is reading the series The Summer I Turned Pretty. I did watch the show already, had some mixed feelings on it. I was totally there for the vibes. I thought that the way they shot it was amazing. I thought She's that the characters were really interesting. It is pretty young. Like I did get very frustrated with the main character, but it made me super intrigued to try the books. I read the first book in 2014. So when I was in high school, I was 16 years old and I read this book. So I was about the same age as Belly in this book. But never have I ever finished the entire series, or have I? <laughs> to be completely honest, I went through my Goodreads, I saw that I had marked that I had read all three books, and that completely shocked me. I was 1000% sure that I only read the first book, and I didn't continue with the series because I was completely annoyed with the main character. That's my recollection of it, but then I went through my Goodreads, and it said that I had read the other two books. Not only did I read them, but I finished them both in a day. I don't think that's correct. I think what I did was I started reading them. I meant to put them back in my to be read pile in Goodreads because I have absolutely no recollection of books two and three. So what I'm gonna do is assume for the sake of this video that I have not read books two and three. I have barely a memory of this book to be honest and I am halfway through at this point. And the reason I started to read it now in August is because I'm actually going to vacation in about a week. I'm gonna be on the beach, I'm gonna be at a beach house, like I'm there for the vibes. So I really want to get to book two and three and finish book three by the time I'm on vacation in a week. These books are really short. They're very breezy and easy to consume. Quick notes, um, just for continuity purposes. My friend gave me this book, which has the like that old cover on it. She went on vacation this week and I completely forgot to grab the last two books from her. So what did I do? I went and bought the series for myself and Martha Knowles. They have a completely new cover, which I'm actually obsessed with. I love the way this looks way more than the other one. I think that the other one is cute, like the white, like it does very much reflect that beachy vibe. However, I really have a pet peeve with people on the cover of books. I hate it. Because I've watched the show, these people look nothing like the people in the show, so it was kind of bothering me. So honestly, I'm very much more excited about this. And also, if you follow me on TikTok, I've been way more active on there throughout the months I haven't been posting on YouTube. I started a new series on there called the A Thousand Book Challenge. Basically, I found out that it takes only a thousand books to be considered a library. These books will be added to my A Thousand Book series. Go check out my TikTok. I have documented a lot of the new books that I bought to get up to this goal. I would love for you guys to keep up with me on there too. So. Let's open this up. <gasps> I just bought it today. I'm literally unwrapping it for you guys, like just being honest. Look at this book box. It's like so pretty. Oh my lord. This is so cute. Look, I'm not even super into love triangles like at all. I actually think they're one of my most detested tropes actually, but I love the vibe of this book. Like there's nothing that's cuter than like a beach read, like a summery, like beach house vibe, like all of that. Like I love it. So let's get started. I am currently halfway through the first book. Now, my initial thoughts are that Belly is super young. And obviously at the time when I first read this, I was 16. So I was about the same age as her, but even then I thought that she was very immature. She's making very poor decisions. She's going back and forth between the two guys. Like it was just not the vibe for me then as a 16 year old, even now as a 24 year old, I'm looking at it with a much different lens. I'm trying to not get annoyed with her. Like my initial reaction is like, God, bring me some new adult books, please. But I want to give her some grace because I know that a lot of teenagers in books are over matured and are over sexualized, especially by grown adult authors and directors. This girl, I'm trying to give her some grace and be like, no, she's acting exactly like how a teenager should act. 
but it's super goddamn annoying. Gotta be very honest, from the show and the book, I am both Team Comrade. Is that a surprise to like anyone? It shouldn't. If you thought that was surprising, you should probably follow me and get to know me a little bit better. Morally gray characters with dark hair are my bread and butter. I finished the first season of the show and I'm guessing that encapsulated like book one. Conrad did mess up and it was super annoying how they went back and forth. Jeremiah was always very honest about his feelings from the get go when he had confessed that he was into belly. It was very much like, this is how it's gonna go. This is how I feel. And I appreciated that because Conrad and like Belly were super angsty and blah, blah, blah. Shout out to some characters who I love. I love Beck. I love Susanna Beck. She is awesome. I know what happens in the show. Devastating. I really cannot have her go. I got so attached to her in the show. I loved her character. Special characters that I hate. Taylor go away. There was no redeeming quality about her. Even here, even in the book, it doesn't make sense to me that these two girls would be friends. So we're just gonna get into it. I'm gonna read by the pool to give myself some vibes. I think her shtick is just a classic love triangle. I like that Belly stood strong and was like, listen, like, thanks for telling me that, but I do genuinely think that I still have feelings for Conrad. I don't want to string you along. Secondly, Belly has the worst decision-making skills and also the worst, like, initial grief response. I'm sorry, but kissing your crush when he's grieving on his mom, number one, has aggressive cancer, and number two, his parents are getting divorced while she has aggressive cancer. Terrible. Literally awful. Worst decision ever. I don't know how this book is gonna end. I haven't gone to last. I'm basically the second to last page, but I had to stop to pick up my sister real quick. So I just finished the summer I turned pretty. The ending was a lot different than what I thought. It was super jarring because it ended in winter time around Christmas when Conrad met up with Belly. So I like that they ended on a moment together, kind of a cliffhanger, but still cute. I'm pretty sure that she's gonna swing back around to Jeremy at some point. Jeremy. But for right now, it's Conrad and Belly. Last time I rated the book three stars. I think I would rate it a little bit higher this time, like 3.5 or 3.75. I don't know if my perspective has changed or I'm just becoming a little bit more like into it because I watched the show and it's a more recent read and there's like a lot of hype built around it. Honestly, I'll never know, but I am excited to continue. She did leave it on a good cliff. Hanger. So now I'm going to be switching to the other series. I'm going to read books two and three, hopefully within the next week. So that way I can be finishing the series while I'm in South Carolina. Well, I wasn't feeling good after dinner and I popped a day quilt and then I decided to finish um, It's Not Summer Without You, which was a terrible decision really because really because it didn't make me feel any better. Okay. The <laughs> Are you crying? As I was saying, I didn't like this book because like the ending was super confusing to me. So what happens is that Jeremiah and Belly kiss and his brother Conrad finds them even though he showed absolutely no interest in Belly this entire book. Wait, who did? Conrad? Conrad. Wait, so like Belly like this thing in the first book? Yes, yeah, so, so this Conrad is this is the second book. Belly is obsessed with Conrad and Conrad does not really care about her at all. But Jeremiah's obsessed with her, but I'm pretty sure it's only because he wants to beat Conrad at one thing in his life. Like Conrad's way more gifted, he's smarter, he's going to like maybe be a doctor and Jeremiah's like not that. And it just made me frustrated with every single character in this book. My favorite character is Susanna, and she's dead for two-thirds of the series. <laughs> That's facts. Also, so stupid, Belly was like to her mom, I hate you, I wish Susanna was my mom. <gasps> Bruh, you're in love with Susanna's kids, so you want to be in love with your brothers? Mm-hmm. <laughs> make, it, make it make sense. And they just ride off into the sunset in the car, just holding hands. And that's where it leaves off. Ew. That's so frustrating. And for what? So hopefully this one goes better. I really miss the vibes of the first book, honestly. The second book was kind of a letdown. I'd give it a three stars. I think the first book I gave 3.5 to 4. That's it? Yeah, it was like, okay. No, why is it so high? What do you mean? 
What? You rated it so high. Three? Yeah. Okay, I'll give it a 2.5 then. I didn't want to be so mean that I was like, okay, but I'm going to give it a 2.5. Like critical on that book, so. And so I started reading the third book a little bit. I have the third book here. We'll always have summer. Oh, that's pretty. Yeah, I like it. We'll always have summer. And it starts off with Jeremiah and Belly being in a relationship for two years, which honestly props to him because Conrad couldn't even do that for like two weeks. So good for him. But they're at the same college now and it's giving me weird vibes. I think that like she's going to end up with Conrad still. Forget about all types of things. You remind me of the Arizona Thunder. Satisfy the songs and make since I last was vlogging about reading the summer I turned pretty for you guys um, unfortunately when I was in South Carolina I got a little bit sick which I did not prepare for I blame my brother who totally coughed all over me and gave me some type of cold was not you know miss Rona I got tested wasn't that and now I am back in New Jersey in my house I did get started with we'll always have summer and I'm in the beginning stages of the relationship that that is Belly and Jeremiah. At this point, they've been together for two years and they've had a pretty serious college relationship, which I find quite interesting, honestly, considering they're both very aware that Jeremiah was a secondary choice to Conrad. We're at the part though, where Belly found out accidentally at a party that while they were on a break for a week, Jeremiah went and hooked up with another girl from their class. I have a lot of thoughts on that but basically she gets extremely upset she's like crying like you know all this he is being super pathetic about it he's like on his knees like trying to convince her not to leave him I'm just confused because I do know eventually they get engaged so I'm like how does it turn from oh I found out my boyfriend cheated on me to yep we should definitely get married while we're super young upon finding out that he cheated on me not sure how we're gonna get there but I'm sure it's gonna annoy me on the way Conrad would never my thought is my issue with this book so far or with the series I guess is that neither of the two characters spend much time in the present showing belly that they like her and what I mean by that is a lot of this book is devised between flashbacks and the present moment. I'm fine with that. I think that that could be written really well. And actually I quite like the flashbacks when they were super young because it shows backstory about like their dynamics of how they grew up together, all the summers they had with not only them, but with Steven, with Susanna. However, I think that a lot of the reasons why we're supposed to like Conrad and in turn Jeremiah happen in the past and i don't feel anything for the present version of either of them jeremiah we're supposed to really like him because that was the first boy belly ever kissed and that was the first boy she was in a serious relationship with and who wrote love notes to her on her dorm room board all of those things happen in the past and we are reading them in the future tense through flashbacks and therefore it's not as effective at making me feel anything towards these two characters. I think that a love triangle could be done well if the angst and the tension were there in the present form. Now we're in the present where Belly is like super annoyed with Jeremiah. She's like, I never knew he had allergies. I never knew that he was super annoying when he's sick because I only saw him every summer my entire life. It's funny because it feels like we're rushing to the part where she's already annoyed with him. And so I am not compelled to root for him, but in the same turn, the only reason I'm not hating on Conrad is because he's not currently here. And I'm also really sad that we haven't gotten a scene in Cousins yet. Like they're in college, like they even said that they forgot to go last summer because they were so busy. And like that just makes me so completely sad because my favorite thing about this series is the setting of Cousins. I think that it's so special the way that Jenny Han describes it. I mean, it feels like an actual physical place and even a character at this point who you're very attached to. And honestly, I'm more attached to that house than I am to any of these love interests. I'm only on page 27, but honestly, that's one tenth of the book because there's only 200 something pages. So we're just gonna continue reading this and I will update you as I go along. 
been a couple hours. I've made some headway and I had to tell you about this section because you know what? I make fun of Belly, but sometimes, you know, I would crumble like she does. I get all mushy at the crumbs that Conrad leaves behind. And so I annotated this one part because I thought it was super cute. We get a flashback of them at Cousins Beach and I'm so grateful it's with Conrad and not with Jeremiah. It's Christmas and they didn't mean to be there together. She is with Jeremiah at this point, but she goes to Cousins because on Christmas Eve, she's alone. All of her family members are like on other trips and she doesn't know what to do. So she's like, you know what? I'll go to Cousins. I'll just have a good time by myself. Unintentionally, Conrad also goes to Cousins Beach. And so they end up kind of hanging out out not hanging out together, but they still have some cute moments. So I wanted to annotate this one section because it did turn me into a pile of mush. Looking up at him, I had this sudden thought, oh my God, I still love you. I thought my feelings for Conrad were safely tucked away like my old rollerblades and the little gold watch my dad bought me when I first learned how to tell time. But just because you bury something, that doesn't mean it stops existing. Those feelings, they've been there all along, all that time. I just had to face it. He was a part of my DNA. I had brown hair and I had freckles and I would always have Conrad in my heart. <laughs> Why in my belly? I'm like, oh my God. Maybe it's just cause her mindset is like super biased towards Conrad. And this whole time I have Taylor Swift going on in my head. I have Better Man, Mr. Perfectly Fine and this love. I'm just waiting for Conrad to come back. Cause I really can't stand Jeremiah at this point. Like even Belly can't stand Jeremiah. She does not love him enough or really at all. <laughs> I'm gonna make that argument. She doesn't love him. It's very apparent through her like thoughts that he is a second option. <laughs> this is so utterly ridiculous. This is so ridiculous. She's literally trying to get over the fact that she he like cheated on her or like whatever, hooked up with some girl when they were on breaking the line about it. And he literally is like, how about you just marry me instead? Like, let's just forget all of that. You could just marry me and that'll be my promise to you that it's not gonna happen again. <sighs> oh my God. Oh my God. Ew, David. This is the wrong thing to say. Don't you see, Belly? It's been our story all along. Yours and mine and nobody else's. That possession is just hinting that there was someone else and that he is still upset that Conrad could come back any time now and swoop in. That's my whole problem with Jeremiah. I don't think he really likes Belly. I think he just likes that he got her away from Conrad. Okay, good for Belly. You just want to erase what you did by marrying me. Yes, girl. Yes, correct. He's trying to distract you. Is she seriously giving in? She literally just told Taylor about this whole thing and Taylor was like, I'm gonna rip his face off. If I were Taylor, I would slap Belly in the face. I'd be like, girl, get it together. That's just embarrassing. Like, I'm so sorry. People ask you, how did he propose? How did you get married? And you're gonna have to think, okay, you probably won't tell people that he proposed out of guilt from cheating, but in your head, you're always going to remember, oh yeah, he cheated on me, I found out about it, and he proposed to me as a way to win me back. And he just pinky promised never to do it again. Idiots, I'm so sorry, stupid. Oh, and then she goes, that night I dreamed of Conrad. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, of course you did. They're gonna get married at the cousin's house. Conrad better come in there and break up that wedding. I swear because I always thought that Belly and Conrad are gonna add up together and that I wanted them to get married at the cousin's house because I feel like it was more special to them than it was to her and Jeremiah. Like, I mean, they grew up there together, but they weren't really romantic there together, you know? So Belly just talked a little bit about her college experience. I kind of feel bad for her. Like I resonate for once in this goddamn series. I resonate with one thing that Isabel Conklin has said, and that is that college was a really hard time for her and that it was super hard for her to connect with people. As a default, she ended up clinging to Jeremiah because it was just easier for her to make friends that way. I definitely agree with that. I think making friends in college is so hard and exactly like her, I also had a roommate who kind of did her own thing. She was a great roommate. I think that she was so polite and I got very lucky that I didn't end up with someone 
like crazy or who was disrespectful or anything but I didn't become best friends with my roommate and therefore I didn't have a built-in person to go and make other friends and other groups and try things around campus and go places like for once I actually do resonate with the experience that Belly is describing but then in the next sentence she says that she dated two brothers in the same family so I don't relate to that part oh my god we're finally getting Conrad's point of view yes the guy's POV is always better I don't care what anybody says especially if he's in love more than the girl is their POV oh my god excellent excellent I hated Jeremiah's POV in the other book I couldn't stand it I did not want to read any more of it I have to read this part I saw her before she saw me in the front row I saw her sitting with my dad and Laurel and Steven she had her hair pulled back pinned up on the sides I'd never seen her wear her hair like that before she had a light purple dress on. She looked grown up. It occurred to me that she'd grown up while I wasn't looking, that there was every likelihood she had changed and I didn't know her anymore. But when she stood up to clap, I saw the band-aid on her ankle and I recognized her again. She was belly. She kept messing with the breaths in her hair. One was coming loose. <laughs> no, I'm 24. I can't, mm, okay. I have to highlight, I have to annotate that little section because that looks like I'm starting to annotate before I kind of found it sacrilegious. But you know what? Like, I spent money on these books. These are my books to read and enjoy. So if I want to write a little bit in them or whatever, I'll do so. If you are looking for a really good annotation pen, I would definitely check out the Toll Gel Ink Pen. I got them on Amazon. It was a whole rainbow pack. They're on Amazon. I think they're about $15, at least when I purchased them. I love how she has an identical experience to him. Then I saw him. Standing there in the back was Conrad in a gray suit. I stared and he lifted his hand in a wave. I lifted mine, but I didn't move. I couldn't move. Oh my god. Next to me, I heard Jeremiah clear his throat. I forgot and he was standing there. <laughs> That's a hit, girl. I get it. Like, Conrad is the perfect, like, Mr. Perfectly Fine. He's never gonna, like, really reciprocate as much as you are gonna give him. But if you are feeling something this strong for someone else years later, you shouldn't even be with the person you're currently with because you aren't giving them that kind of attention and that kind of love. Even if you are gonna end up with the other person, you're already taking away from the person you're currently with, so you shouldn't even be with them. Oh my god, I don't want him to say it. I don't want him to say it. Oh my god. Oh my god, I'm like a person who gets really bad secondhand cringe. I feel it in my bones. Like my my stomach is curdling right now like milk at the thought of them announcing that they're engaged. I'm not meant for love triangles. Like my brain is specifically not wired to understand love triangles. I love how everyone is quiet. Nobody's happy about it. Laurel's like, are you pregnant? Oh my god, Belly's still 18. She literally just ran away from home. Perfect, what every 18 year old should do. And is now planning to stay in Cousins and Jeremiah just told her that Conrad is gonna be there. For the whole second. Oh my God. Like this whole time he'd been so up and down about her. And meanwhile in his head, he's like, this is my girl. Like this is my person and she's marrying my brother. It's the consequences of his own actions. Like it was very easy for him to keep Belly as his girlfriend this entire time. Like there's no reason for her to even have the chance to date Jeremiah. Wait a minute, the reason that she wants carrot cake is because Conrad made her eat carrots when he was younger. Come on, you're gonna have your wedding cake inspired by someone who isn't your groom. Come on. Oh my God, he admitted to being in love with Belly. He really admitted it. And to his girlfriend at the time, no less. Agnes asked, on a scale of one to 10, how in love are you? He said, you can't put being in love on a scale. Either you are or you aren't. I agree with that. Oh, she says, when did you know you were in love? And he said, I didn't have an answer to that question. There hadn't been one specific moment. It was like gradually waking up. You go from being asleep to the space between dreaming and awake, and then it's a consciousness. It's a slow process, but when you're awake, there's no mistaking it. There's no mistaking that it had been love. God damn it, Conrad! You've been thinking these things this entire time? This is what frustrates me, right? I read the guy's point of view, it's so freaking sweet, and his actions don't correlate with what he's thinking in his head. Like, excuse me? He literally said, he was like, it was like, you wake up and there's no mistaking that you had been in love. Absolutely feral, this man. He said, if she knew how much I still cared, it was all over. I wouldn't be able to walk away again. The first time is hard enough. 
Promises you make on your mother's deathbed are promises that are absolute. They're titanium. There's no way you're breaking them. I promised my mother that I would take care of my brother, that I would look after him. I kept my word. I did the best way I could by leaving. I might have been a fuck up and a failure and a disappointment, but I wasn't a liar. I did lie to Belly though, just that one time in that crappy motel. I did it to protect her. That's what I kept telling myself. Still, if there was one moment in my life I could redo, one moment out of all the shitty moments, that was the one I'd pick. When I thought back to the look on her face, the way it just crumpled, how she sucked her in her lips and wrinkled her nose to keep her hurt from showing, it killed me. God, if I could, I'd go back to that moment and say all the right to things. I'd tell her I loved her. I'd make it so she never looked that way again. See, like him and Jeremiah, just not the same internally, like mentally. I understand why he's being so broody, like his actions on the outside. And like, I don't fault Belly for this. It's extremely annoying to have someone who's so inconsistent because actions are important. And she said that she's like, execution matters. It's just heartbreaking to read his internal thoughts of like, I'm doing this for my brother. I'm doing this for my mom. I promised mom when she died that I would do this. He's just misinterpreting what that means. I really like reading Conrad's point of view because it humanizes him a lot. I feel like Belly, she kind of, she idolized him so much that he seemed unreal and untouchable. And reading his point of view, the struggles with his dad makes a lot of sense and it just explains his psychology a lot. And it's quite interesting. Way more interesting than the idolized version that Belly created of him. Oh, they're like eating pizza peaches together and he like takes his shirt and wipes her mouth and she's like that may be the most intimate thing anyone has ever done to me. This is giving me the same vibe as like The Office. If you guys have ever watched it, I am obsessed with that show. When Pam is planning her wedding to Roy and Jim, even though he's in love with her, like ends up helping her with like wedding stuff just because Roy is not involved. And she just has so much fun with Jim planning her wedding to another man. The same exact energy and I'm here for it. I love it. <laughs> this is a perfect example of what I wanted for the last two books. This angst was not that present. Him taking a shirt and like wiping her mouth and him looking away because he knows it's wrong. That is the shit that I live for. That is what gets the girls foaming out the mouth, all right? And I feel like there was very rarely any of that. It was mostly just Conrad pushing her away. There was nothing in the present that was cute and adorable. Of course, I wish we also had his POV. I love when books are dual point of view. What I would kill to read, Mariana Zapata's books in dual POV. Oh my God, can you imagine Aiden's point of view? That may kill me. <laughs> oh my God. Conrad leaned in closer to me, his head just barely resting on my shoulder as I cleaned. I could feel him breathing in and out, could feel each sharp intake of breath every time I touched the cut. I'm such a sucker. Like I'm really just playing into Jenny Han's like hands for real. And now she's helping him stand up because he's lost a lot of blood. He's weak in a tizzy and now you have to help him. I finally got to the part where he admits that he loves her. And holy crap, is it epic. It's crazy to finally hear him have an emotion because this whole time he's been just a robot. And he's right. He was like, at the time, he was so self-destructive and he was so upset because his mom was dead. Like, he was like, I couldn't love you the way that you deserve to be loved. And Jeremiah could. I didn't think he was gonna be so straightforward about it. He was like, don't be with him, be with me. He was like, I love you. I like this part. She goes, you're just saying it because I'm marrying Jeremiah. And he goes, it's not all of a sudden. He said, his eyes locked on mine, it's always. And I like it because that's a reference to the title. We'll always have summer. Okay, this part is exactly the way I loved you by Taylor Swift. For context, they just got into a fight because she called him out finally. She's like, you weren't drunk. And he was like, fine, you broke my heart. He's like, I'm trying to salvage what's left of the situation. Screaming at each other and he runs away. She goes, I sank onto the deck. My heart was pounding a million trillion times a minute. I never felt more alive. Anger, sadness, joy, he made me feel it all. No one else had that kind of effect on me. Suddenly, I had this feeling, this absolute certainty that I was never going to be able to let him go. It was as simple and as hard as that. Having a drink with Laurel, he admits that it's killing him. Laurel's like, I miss your mom so much and we really need her right now. And he just starts bawling. Why am I such a 
just suffer for this man. I was not interested in him until this book. So Belly just told Jeremiah that Conrad confessed his feelings. And this is just so rich because Jeremiah is mad at her for not telling him that like she saw Conrad at Christmas. He shoves it in her face and is like, at least what Lacey and I did, we weren't even together at that point. But like nothing happened with Conrad, literally nothing. They just existed in the same house. Like maybe she shouldn't have lied about it. Like I get it, it made it seem like a secret. But you, she, he literally slept with a whole other woman while they were on like a one week break and didn't say anything. You're gonna tell me that that's not as bad? The audacity of this man. And like, she's still like begging to marry him. Oh my God. They did a flashback scene of when he came over for Valentine's Day. Let me tell you, this is like my bread and butter. Like if some guy were to lay outside of my front yard, we're going to look at the stars and the moons all night and I'm gonna take your hand, I'm gonna drag it and we're just gonna look at constellations. I would marry him right then. I've never thought about my wedding in my life. Planning it out, going to Vera Wynn, getting a drop. Like I would literally spiral so far out of control. I'm not a heart and candy kind of girl either. So this kind of like nerdy, intentional, very planned out and thought out stuff is such catnip to me. This part killed me. She goes, we didn't know what was ahead of us then. We were just two teenagers looking up at the sky on a cold February night. So no, he didn't give me flowers or candy. He gave me the moon and the stars, infinity. <laughs> Jenny Hogg really popped off in that one. By the way, it's 2.20 in the morning. I did not think I was gonna finish this tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, I think this is my favorite book of the series. I think it goes 3-1-2. That's my order. This is the stuff I wish we would've gotten all along. Like all of this cutesy, like angsty stuff. Like I just freaking eat it up. And the fact that he was like, I knew you would get it. He was like, I'm never going to be able to find another girl who I trust as much as I trust you. And it's like that understanding, shared truth of the universe and knowing that you're not alone. I did not think I'd be that invested in this book. Jeremiah had a good point. He was like, I don't want just a part of you. He's like, I want all of you. A part of you, even if it's just a part, loves Conrad. Oh, Susanna, if you could see us now. Yet you were wrong about a couple things. I'm not 30 yet, I'm 23 almost 24. Holy crap, she's still younger than me! <laughs> Spain is where I got my first letter from him. Real letters written by his hand, not emails. I didn't write him back, not at first, but they still came once a month, every month. The first time I saw him, it was another year, at my college graduation, and I just knew. My young man is kind and good and strong, just like you said but he doesn't kiss me like Rhett kissed Scarlet. He kisses me even better. And there's one last thing you were right about. He does have the last name Fisher. He rolls up his pant legs and then he grabs my hand, ready. We run toward the water, tripping in the sand, screaming and laughing like little kids. At the last second, he picks me up like he's carrying me across the threshold. If you dare try and belly flop me right now, you're going down with me, I warn. My arms tight around his neck. I go wherever you go, he says launching us into the water. This is our start. This is the moment it becomes real. We are married. We are infinite. Me and Conrad. I just finished. God, I hate the feeling you get of like the ending of a book that you were so engaged in and suddenly you're like back in reality, back at your kitchen table and not in Cousin's Beach. I really like this one. This is probably my favorite one out of all of them, probably because they finally got together. It is two 30 in the morning. I have to go upstairs, do a palette cleanser, read like the smuttiest insta love nonsense that I could find online. And then tomorrow I will come back to you guys with a full review. I have had some time to process what I read last night. I can't believe I finished them. I think in all in all, it took me about a week or two. I can't even tell you how much I fell in love with Cousins Beach House. I could really feel how much it meant to each of these characters in different ways that this house remain a permanent picture in their lives. I am now extremely nostalgic towards this book. And in fact, I just thought it was so, so sweet when Belly and Conrad, after their wedding, they go to the beach, they run in the sand together, like enjoying their wedding day. Now I think it is on my bucket list to go to a beach on my wedding day and run in my gown on the beach. I really, really have to give major props to Jenny Han for establishing such a good setting. As for this last book, I think 
think I am tied between this book and the first book being my favorite. I would rate both of these 3.5 stars because they were centered around Feli and Conrad. The second book I would say is my least favorite. I gave this about two stars, which is like, I, I really don't rate books that low usually. This one just made me angry. Overall, I do think that this was a cute read. I wouldn't tell anyone to not read it. It's not like my favorite book, but again, like the vibes of these books were just so compelling to me. I was so attached to that beach house and like the vibe of it. I wanted to let you guys know that these are part of my 1000 book challenge. If you guys don't know what I'm talking about on TikTok, over there I'm documenting my 1000 book challenge where I would really like to own 1000 books in my lifetime. The summer I turned pretty was number 77. It's not summer without you is number 78 and we'll always have summer is number 79. With that being said, I had a really fun time doing this challenge, especially while I was on vacation. I'm sorry that I couldn't complete it. I just was like deadly sick. That's dramatic. I was just sick. I had a really fun time reading these books. I love you guys. Never, again, can I say never have I ever read the Summer I Turned Pretty series. I love you guys. I'll see you in the next one. Bye. So good. It's crazy or whatever. It's it's the